So how are you doing today, Drez? I'm great, man. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Um, I have seen The Nest twice now, so I'm interested in kind of getting your perspective. First, I wanted to know, did you shoot all your scenes on the same day? Because all of your scenes are in the same room or the same setting, I should say. Even though- Yeah, you yeah, yeah. I was, I was only on set for, oh, well, no, actually two different locations one day. Okay. So yeah, I, so I had this uh, the scene in the school and then the scene at the house. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a scene at the house. I, yeah. I was thinking the scenes at the school because I know that you had in in the office you had a scene with the the mom, the daughter, mm -hmm. and the dad. Um, yeah. So I wanted to know: Did you work with any of them off camera to kind of get your chemistry going, or was it just straight up improv from the moment the cameras rolled? I mean. <sighs> It was a little while back, so I'm, I'm recalling, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> pandemic, yeah, we, we, pandemic messed everything up. Time yeah, I know it's been, it's been a while since we filmed it, so I'm now I'm having to recall the memories here. Um, but I remember, uh, obviously, we talked, you know, off camera, just kind of getting to know each other and stuff like that. And just kind of uh, we did run through the lines a couple of times, but there was no like hardcore rehearsal. It was just like, you know, we both we all came in prepared. And then we just sort of, you know, ran the line, said them out loud to each other. Um, and, you know, it was it was more of an understanding of uh, our characters' relationships. You know, just that's, that's what we really want to nail down. Like, who, who are we to each other? And we both came in with our own ideas, our own theories of what our history, uh, history is or history was uh, as individuals and as a pair. Um, so we, you know, we express that to each other. We molded over for a few minutes and then we just, you know, we, we, uh, we did the damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> when they pitched it to you, did they pitch the entire story? Like, did they give you all the plot details or was it more based around your character and what your character had interaction wise? I was, I, I want to say that they did give me, if anything, at least like a brief synopsis of the entire story. Um, I don't think I got the entire script initially. I don't think so. Uh, but they gave me enough to, to obviously to play with and to build a character from. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I do believe they gave me like a brief synopsis. Um, obviously, the writer, Jennifer Trudung, is actually a, a personal friend of mine. Um, you know, we used to go to acting class together back in the day. And, you know, I've just been I'm the biggest fan of hers in the world. Like I'm I'm crazy crazy about her as an artist as a person she's just she's just wonderful i'm talking to um, her so thursday she, i'm talking to her thursday so oh yeah she's great dude. she lives she's, up she's, to what you have <laughs> oh no trust me trust me I'm, I'm not even doing it justice man she uh you know she, it's crazy it's, it's wild to me how uh how just intense her imagination is and then how sweet and just kind and like soft of an individual she is in person you know it's just like the things that come to her, the things that she comes up with are just, you know, like the nest. But then you talk to her and she's just, you know, sweet as pie, man. So, so yeah. That's awesome. So this role, I feel like I've, I've watched a couple of your acting reels and I feel like your role, just based on what I, I've seen bits and pieces of your other, other uh, characters, I feel like your mm -hmm. role in the nest is is a bit more passive than what you're used to uh, performing <laughs> is. Um, yeah. I was curious if you had any specific experience, like therapy or counseling wise, that helped you get that bedside manner down uh, as the character. Yeah. Uh, thanks, man. I, first of all, thank you for the <laughs> for for that. I never really, really even you thought about it, but yeah, I guess yeah, he is a bit more a bit more passive, but. Um, honestly, I, I did. I did pull from you know personal experience growing up. Um, when I was a kid, uh, I had a little bit of a temper as a child. Uh, I'm not sure where it came from, but uh, there was a few times where you know I get into a a, a a scrap at school and I go talk to the counselor and they calm me down and you know tell me well, you know why I can't do that or whatever, whatever. So I, I've you know I. I had a I had a little bit of a mean streak in me as as a child, so I had a few conversations with the school counselors, um, and you know, and I was I'm also was a very emotional child as well, you know. So it was it was their job to kind of reel me back in and calm me down once I got going. So yeah, this you know thinking about those times where they would just literally just they would be stern, they'd be direct, but it'd be so uh, I guess still sensitive and empathetic to to you know a child's emotions 
Um, and and, it, and it, that really helped me with obviously this particular situation where obviously this little girl has been through a lot and her mother has been through a lot and I know her mother personally, so I know what they've been through. So I'm even more empathetic to their situation. And obviously as a school counselor working with smaller children, you know, that, that's, that's very much a, you know, that's a, that's a choice. That's a choice you make to, to, to devote your time and, and your attention to these little kids and, and a very crucial part of their life. So, I mean, it, it, it's nothing, nothing to take lightly, you know, something that happens to a child that young will stay with them forever. So you have a big responsibility there. That is a very, very heavy answer. I love the way that you uh, worded it. So I want to ask <laughs> with the character that you played, um, I feel like it was very obviously very dialogue heavy. Uh, do mm -hmm. you feel like you would you are more interested in dialogue driven um, scenes or characters? Oh. I mean, or 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 versus like uh, other scenes where you are acting with your face. Like I saw a piece on your demo reel where you were smoking and you had a gun put to your face and you were just you were more expressive. So do right. you feel like uh, you prefer a balance of the two, or do you like leaning in one of the two directions? That's tough, man, because honestly, I mean, I like, I love dialogue heavy, heavy films. Like I love, I love Tarantino because of his dialogue. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I love the, 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 the magic of words, the, the, uh, just the rhythm and, and the song basically in the dialogue, like it's all beautiful to me. Um, but there is something special about being able to tell a story without saying anything. Um, being able to, to show the audience exactly what's happening but also leaving some mystery to it because you're not saying anything and just being able to be present and, and feel what is happening and, and show that just through your eyes, not even doing much with your body, just it's telling the story right here. Um, is, is something special about that. So, I mean, it's hard for me to choose between the two. I love them both for different reasons. Um, but as my girlfriend would say, I love to hit the sound of my own voice. So I'm gonna lean towards the dialogue. The dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I, I'm right there with you. Why do you think I have a, a show where I talk? <laughs> um, oh I, yeah, dude, dude, oh man, dude, I would, I, I would love to have a podcast when they just be able to <laughs> talk to people and, and, and hear different people's perspectives and just have great conversation, man. Yeah, I had spoken with, um, I can't think of her name. The actress who plays the mom. Uh, the oh, Sarah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The actress who plays Beth, Sarah Nev Navratil. I can't yes, remember. yes. I, yeah, I'm gonna let you butcher it because I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Something very German that I don't know how to pronounce. So, um, yeah, she so was great. great. She was great. Uh, so, yeah, man. So I was gonna say when you were talking about the expressions and stuff. The uh, younger actress who played, uh, I think Maggie was the, the girl's name. Uh, mm -hmm. She was very, you know, expressive. Obviously, she didn't talk as much. So I feel like that's definitely right on the nose with what, with what you were going for expression wise. I feel like right. for, for that age as a child, for her to deliver her performance with yeah. face rather than as many words. I think that's that's pretty killer. Um, yeah. So this is, I, I've seen like some of the other things in your demo reels, but I'm not really familiar with your other projects. Um, can you, mm -hmm. you know, talk about kind of chart your, your history from when you started as a performer, as a entertainer to now and sort of the, a couple of the projects you've done? Yeah, sure, man. Uh, well, I started, I started a little late. I started acting when I was 20. Um, well, I started pursuing it when I was 20. Apparently I've been a performer all my life I just didn't know it um you know I was always you know that kid that wanted to you know center of attention crack jokes and this that and the third and do role play type games and stuff like that so I mean I guess I I enjoyed it before I knew I enjoyed it um but then I fell in love with it when I was 20. Uh, I st <laughs> I literally started uh with knowing nothing about it whatsoever so I thought well, what do you do when you look for a job? You go on Craigslist. <laughs> so I literally went on Craigslist looking for acting jobs. And luckily I found one that was legitimate. It wasn't, you know, anything shady. Just a real small, <laughs> low, no budget picture shooting in Asheville, North Carolina at the time. Uh, you know, I went and auditioned, never had taken an acting class, never had tried to act in any way I mean I've done like a, did like a couple of skits here and there in high school for an after school program but I never looked at it as acting it was just something fun to do 
Um, I, you know, got a little bit part in there. I actually got to work behind the camera too, do some PA stuff to kind of understand how a movie's made. Um, and then I jumped directly into theater. And I stayed in theater for about five years, um, you know, doing plays, uh, did Shakespeare, uh, did a play called uh, The Mountaintop, um, where I portrayed uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, you know, just a bunch of The Shape of Things. Uh, uh, I did, we did a, a, a stage performance of Night of the Living Dead. Um, you know, a bunch of a bunch of different stuff that I, I really enjoyed, and really, I feel like I have theater to thank a lot for as far as my chops go. Um, and then about five years into that, at about 24, 25, I switched over to film acting, jumped into a film acting class, started studying, started practicing, um, and got my agent around 26, and been you know kind of plugging away at that ever since. And you know, I've had some. I've had some challenges, I've had some lessons, and I've also had some triumphs and some victories. So I'm, uh, I'm very thankful for the journey I've had so far. Well, you've got hella charisma, so I can tell that you love being on camera, but you've mentioned, <laughs> you know, you wear, you've worn a couple hats behind, you know, you said you did some PA work, you did a couple things behind the camera. Is yeah. there like something directing wise, writing wise uh, that you would like to, or specific, either be directing writing or something else that you would like more experience with behind the camera or are you mm -hmm. looking to continue your trajectory of on-screen roles uh yeah honestly a, a little bit of both man um you know i i absolutely uh you know i absolutely have I fell in love with acting man it's 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 uh it's almost spiritual to me you know to to be able to perform um but I, I have found with working with other actors and, you know, my friends and helping them with the auditions that I there is something about directing that really intrigues me. So uh, I, I just I love it's, it's a bit to me. It's a bit more uh, free creatively for me because, you know, with acting, obviously, you, you know, especially with auditions and self taping, you have to direct yourself a lot of times. If you don't have anybody like in person to read with you or a coach or whatever like that. Um, but you're not just, you know, saying, hey, try this, try that. You're also trying to, you know, do it and nail it and, you know, nail the note you're giving yourself with directing. I feel like I can just, you know, be a mad scientist. And I'm just like, oh, what about this? Ooh, I'm not like I'm not a burden with the doubt of can I do it? Can I go there? I'm just like, you can do it. You can go there. I believe in you. <laughs> so, so, I mean, yeah, di directing does. Def I, I definitely see that in my future. Um, I'm 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 for sure 110 percent focused on on the acting side of it right now, um, which, you know, is necessary when you're young and you're up and coming, you know, you, you're trying to establish, and, you know, make a name for yourself and build your brand. You know, you have to kind of give that not kind of you have to give that 100 percent focus and commitment to it because that's you know sort of requires if you don't, then you're not going to get the most out of it that you possibly can. So, um, yeah, I'm definitely. 100% right now focused on just becoming a better actor. You know, that's that's my main thing. I just want to be better. I want to be the best I can be. Um, so when the opportunities come, I'm ready. And um, yeah, that's, that's just where I'm right now. Oh, yeah, that's a that's a great answer. But I want to circle back to your theater. You had mentioned that you got the honor to play um, Martin Luther King Jr. Yeah. Was that the only um, I don't want to say character real life uh, person that you have portrayed? uh in your experience acting yeah yeah so far that's that is that's the only one man and honestly that was that was good for me for a little while that was heavy <laughs> uh the, yeah the, the play the the mountaintop which is actually a, a pretty popular one uh sam jackson and angela bassett did it on broadway a few years back um and it's 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 perfect for theater because it's two people in a hotel room that's all it is the entire play um, and, you know, it's a, it's a kind of a, a reimagination of the night before he was assassinated um, and what may have transpired in his room that night. Um, so it's 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 a beautiful play. It's a it's a pivotal tip. Excuse me. Pivotal play. Um, and it. Uh, you know, it, I, it, it brought it got to it. There's a point in the play at the end where I deliver a speech to the actual crowd. You break the fourth wall. Um, and it's, it's already just, it hits, but I mean, it, without even trying, it, it broke me down every night and literally when the curtain dropped, I, I literally was still sobbing after, after the curtain dropped, man. So 
it, it was a beautiful experience. Um, I did that with just, you know, obviously a little shout out, Different Strokes, which is a great theater company in Asheville, North Carolina. Um, it was beautiful. My co-star, Kirby Gibson, she was great. Um, so it, yeah, it was, it was my only, uh, I guess, portrayal of a real life human being. That's awesome though. Like that is an incredible honor. I can't imagine, I can't even imagine like you being overwhelmed. Like, is there anyone else that- Oh, severely, is, severely overwhelmed at all times. <laughs> is there anybody else that is uh, a real life portrayal that you would be interested or you think that you could handle taking on? Because like, I can yeah. see like with the beard, I can see the beard that you could pull off like a Bozeman look. But you know that's a very fresh. That's very that's very uh, a tender moment right now. So is sure. there anybody you know that that you have a lot of respect for that is either you know posthumous or uh, or still alive that you think yeah. that you you could you could really bring uh, your stamp to do it justice. You know, is it's it's yeah. There is oddly enough, there is one in particular, um, and it's just kind of being a, re a reoccurring thought. Or, or a theme in my life it just kind of it just pops up here and there but uh honestly i would love to do the the autobiographical pick of lenny kravitz because i know they're gonna make one so i would, <laughs> i would absolutely love to do that man i feel like that'd be an awesome opportunity to to, to play him in a movie you know i'd have to brush up on my my musical talents obviously so i can sort of be good but uh yeah i don't know why but that one is one that's just i've it's, it's just come back around in my head a few times in my life and you know I would, uh, I, I mean, I know they're gonna make one. I mean, he's one of the biggest, you know, rock stars of our generation. So I know they're gonna make one. Um, so yeah, Lenny Kravitz would be, that'd be the, that'd be the one for me. Oh yeah. Is there, do you have musical experience? Like I know you said theater and sometimes theater and music go hand in hand, but do you have any experience yeah. with music or is that just something uh, you're willing I, to take on for that role? <laughs> I mean, without, Say, saying anything too damaging to take myself out of running for playing him uh, <laughs> uh not really uh i mean i yeah i i mean obviously i love music i love singing to myself i love singing in the shower but i mean as far as being gifted no i wouldn't say that, that i was gifted it would definitely uh, it would definitely be uh, a role i'd take probably a couple years to prepare for well, that's awesome. And it seems like you've got a lot of passion for that. So hopefully you get a, a chance to, to go down that route, even if, you know, like you had mentioned, when you get to the di directorial standpoint where you're not drawn into a box, but you get to make your own shape of what you're creating, you know, that's another avenue mm -hmm. for you to be able to tell that story at, through your lens. <clears throat> but do you have any I, other projects? I honestly, if I was able to direct that, that'd be great too. Do you have any other projects you have coming up that you would like to plug before I wrap and let you go? And even yeah, if that project, sure, man. Um, you want to say, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I mean, I, I'll go ahead. Obviously, you know, obviously the nest, uh, in Redbox now, uh, available Ju July 20th, you know, for purchase on pretty much every platform that there is to buy movies. Um, uh, I have another movie coming out that'll be online, available online to purchase called Seven Short Films About Our Marriage. Uh, it's a love story that I shot out in Texas a couple years back. That's uh, finally being uh, going to be available to available to the public. Um, the details are still developing, so I'll get back to you on that. And I'm actually in production right now for a movie that'll be on HBO Max. I'm not sure when because it just started production. Um, and I'm not sure if the title is so, is is solid yet. I don't know if it's a working title or not, so I don't want to say just yet. But uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be on HBO Max and starring uh, Lana Condor and Cole Sprouse. Awesome, man. Um, if fans are looking to, you know, ask you more or, you know, find your future projects, where can they find you on social media? Oh, just obviously, you know, Instagram, Facebook, Drez Ryan, Instagram, Drez underscore Ryan, Facebook, Drez Ryan, IMDb, Drez Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, so keep, just, just google simple, me man. just google me you should say yeah just google me and all my stuff will come up on the dress ryan i don't want to i'm not i don't have any kind of pseudonyms or anything like that that you gotta search for uh so last short platform is there anything that you'd like to say that people don't ask you um anything that you want to say you know about the nest or just in general uh as a final message mm. 
do what you love. <laughs> That's perfect. Um, 